Hello, everybody. Are we live? I think so. I did not bring my um, my um, iPad down to make sure we're here. I'm, my software updated, but I think we are good to go. I think we are on YouTube. We're live streaming, so yay. If you're here, say hello. I'd love to chat with you. Um, happy Monday, January 30th. Gosh, it's almost February. Uh, two days to go. How about those Chiefs? Sorry, I had to wear my Kansas City shirt today because we are celebrating the AFC Championship win last night. And if you didn't watch the game, it was a nail biter. Hi, Carol. Hi, Kim. Um, it was a nail biter. I just uh, took me um, <laughs> most of the rest of the evening to get rid of my anxiety over that game. Um, that was too nerve wracking. Hi, Sherry. Anyway, I have got, I've been moving my furniture around in my office. So you might see my dogs in the background on the day bed. So um, that's my background now. But I'm reorganizing my office. I'm about halfway done. And you might notice my mess over here. Um, I'm going to take that workspace out. And because all it is, is a collector for all my stuff stuff that I don't want to take a minute to put away and if it's out of here maybe I won't um, pile stuff up on it I don't know I'll probably pile it up on the floor but hopefully not hopefully not I'm gonna be better hi cat good to see you okay I'm gonna turn the camera around I wanted Saturday I went to a little um, well, it was pretty big. It was a virtual um, event with some Kansas City, Missouri, and Kansas City, Kansas people. That I think we had somebody from Wichita on there. Anyway, we, we do these, I think, every other month, every three months. Um, and January was virtual because... Um, you know, weather, we didn't want people to travel in from Wichita, not knowing what January weather would be like. So um, if you're a demonstrator in our area, Kat, you could have enjoyed the virtual uh, meeting. Um, we made three cards and then there was demonstrations and everything. So anyway, I wanted to show you the three cards. Unfortunately, the Country Bouquet... Um, punch that punches these hearts out is on back order right now. It will be back in stock, but this is one of the fun fold week cards we made. The paper and everything else is still available, but look at this sweet thing. And this is the card we're going to make. This was this one was designed by um, Julie Sperman. She lives here in my area. Um, let's go with this one. This one was um, designed by Davida Lepke, and we didn't have an inside, but I thought that was real cute. And then this fun fold that we're going to learn how to do today, because I thought it was really awesome. You can um, display the card like that. There's a little stop button or a little peg. Anyway, so I thought, let's recreate this fold. I just love it. I hadn't done anything like this before. So that's what we're going to do. Um, let's see. Hi, Stacy. She's got an order coming in today. Mine came in this morning. I haven't even had time to open the box. I'm really excited about that. Um, Kim is excited that we won. Yay! I hope we win the Super Bowl. Um... Kat says good crafters are messy. <laughs> well, we're just in such a hurry to get on to the next uh, thing, I think, that we don't want to clean up after ourselves. Uh, let's see. Did I get all the comments? I'm, I'm going to try and read them all while I'm crafting, but um, if I miss one, I apologize. I'll try and get to it later. Um, oh, my dog's deciding she wants to go outside. And here's a fun card. I went to a gal's house, and we watched it together, and she made this gorgeous card. Um, I'm going to have to have her show me how she did it, but look how that stands up. 
Isn't that cool? It looks like just a little bit of cutting and some folding. She put a lot of work into this. She even has an embossed panel there. I love that. So I'm going to have to have Betty, Betty Holton design this card, made this card for me. And look at this. Here, I'm going to turn the camera around. There we go. I think I can show you better. She made this adorable bag. I told her she needs to have a class so I can learn how to make this bag, but I thought that was ingenious. And look how she just um, punched out that bicycle from the um, designer series paper and it looks like a little postage stamp. That is so cute. Anyway, I'm going to try and figure out how she made this and maybe I'll um, do a do a live with that. But um, today we're going to make, let me turn the camera back around. Boop. Boop. Okay. And y'all, I might have technology. I don't know if I have bandwidth, but I might have um, technology to um, go live with YouTube and Facebook at the same time. So I might try that Wednesday. I didn't want to do anything till I had time to practice and make sure I do have the bandwidth before I announced anything. But the software I use, they updated and um, they're going to allow us to use multiple streaming at once. Um, Kim, I think all of the cards are A2 that I showed so far. They're all A2 size. Yep, the bag is not. That is adorable. I can't wait to learn how. I might have to invite myself over to her house to show me because I love it. Okay, this is the card. And remember, uh, Diana Ball had designed this one that we made on Saturday. So I just recreated it with stuff that I had. Um, and I have a grandson that's turning 10 in March, so I thought, let's do that. I wanted to use some of our free products before they're gone. These are all going to be gone at the end of February. So I'm using the Adorable Owls for this card. And this is free with a $50 purchase. Um, and then I am actually using this Dainty Delight paper. <laughs> But it had a backside that works for mascul a masculine card or a, I love this too. I almost made my, I have another granddaughter that's having a birthday in March too. And I almost made a, a girly one, but I thought let's go with the, the guy. <laughs> so this paper, um, you get 12 sheets, two sided paper, two of, two of six designs. And it is free also. I could show you the little, um, um, celebration brochure, all these products. Here's the owls in here. I've got a check mark because I have that one. And then here's the dainty flowers. So if you place an order of $50 or more, um, and there's no minimum, if you place a hundred dollar order, you can pick two $50 products out and there's a couple of $100 products but we're going to use the adorable owls set today um, and if you'd like to place an order with me just go to leslie.stampinup.net and hit the shop now or the shop button and um, that'll that'll get you there and I sure would appreciate that um, I will list all the products I used in today's video down below in the description when we're done all right to start out, you're going to need a piece of five and a half by eight and a half. I'm going to grab my trimmer because we're going to do just a little scoring. This is the um, Starry Sky. Maggie has decided to go under my feet and make her little nest and scratch like crazy. This is Starry Sky cardstock. I chose it because it coordinated with the designer series paper. So on the eight and a half inch side, the long side, you're going to score it at four and a fourth, just like you would with an A2 size card. And then right here, we're going to do, this is four and a fourth, this little panel. So half of that's two and an eighth. We're going to put a little score line right there. And 
don't know if I need this trimmer again or not, and I just dropped my card. All right, I might, so I'm gonna keep it close by. <laughs> Cat says her dog does the same thing. Oh my gosh, isn't it funny that she just decides to do it now? Okay, <clears throat> so you're gonna fold the card in half like a regular card. And then normally I've made cards like this a lot, right? But for this one, you're gonna fold it in. <clears throat> and then burnish with a bone folder or your fingernail. So that fold is nice and um, crisp. And then you just need two pieces of um, designer series paper for these front panels. I forgot to cut a piece of white paper, guys, for our inside. And these measure two inches by five and three eighths, I think. Yeah, two by five and three eighths. And we're just gonna adhere those onto those two panels. I'm just using my um, double-sided adhesive tape, the stamp and seal. But your favorite adhesive will work, whatever you like. Okay, now to make the little um, spring or lever that allows your um, circle or whatever you're going to attach to the front, the fold, you're going to need two circles. And I cut out, these are I think one and a quarter. Maybe one and three eighths. I don't think it's that uh, particular. If you have a punch or a die, we're going to put those under there and that's going to make that circle pop out. I use the layering circle dies and I believe I used this one. I think the smallest one would have worked, but um, I wanted it to really pop and spring when you um, had the card open. See how it just stands out like that, the little owl? So you can either fold the circles in half or be a little anal like me <laughs> and score them down the middle. I just like to have a crisp score line to fold on. All right, then we're just gonna fold these in half and these are gonna act like a spring we're gonna glue them right here in the center. See how this will spring up? That's why I'm calling it a spring. It's a me little mechanism, I guess. I'm gonna use my liquid adhesive for this. And we're gonna put one on this side, right in the middle. Or if you wanted to pop up you know, somewhere else you could do that. Or wouldn't it be fun to have three little things that popped up when you open the gird? I just thought of that. Now I think I have to try it. <laughs> I think that would be cute. Like for Valentine's Day, maybe three little hearts that popped up. So your mechanism, whatever you're using to pop up needs to, you know, be sized accordingly. You don't want it to be bigger than what you're, um, your um, your actual whatever this thing's called <laughs> embellished panel Carol says I give such easy direction I just don't know have words for things <laughs> okay that is gonna be the little pop-up that's gonna hold our circles and I went ahead and cut a scalloped circle 
and I believe I used the second largest scallop circle of the layering circle dies. The stitched shapes dies or the they are on back order right now so that's why I use the layering circles. In case you wanted to get some right away you wouldn't have to wait. Okay and then I've got a three by three inch piece of basic white or you could just take a scrap and I'm using the Starry Sky ink to stamp my little owls. And my, I'm going to do her, this him, this is a he because this is for my grandson. <laughs> I'm going to put it over to the left side a little bit because I want to leave room for my numbers. Now I'm going to put a different number on this card because I'm going to use it for my other grandson that has a birthday in um, September. So because I don't need two 10 year old birthday cards. Um, then I'm just going to color this in real quick. I'm not going to color the whole owl. I do not like to color much. Um, I just don't. I think I'm too impatient. I love to watch people color and all that, but I just don't like to color much. So I am going to just color the little beak with my pumpkin pie. Um, stamp and blend and then I'm going to color his eyes just a pretty little balmy blue and I totally copied this idea off of the brochure the celebration brochure um, I'll show you this little guy right here they use some balmy blue but um, they didn't color the whole owl in like this they just outline stamped the outline colored the eyes and the hat and the beak and the, the feet and I liked how they did that because I don't really like the color <laughs> now what's really gonna be funny is if uh, my 10 year old grandson, he turns 10 on March 3rd. I have a March 3rd, March 5th. I think his is the 3rd. <laughs> and then um, Riley, that's Sam, is my 10 year old. Riley will turn 9 on September 3rd. If they remember, oh, I got that same card. We'll see what happens. <laughs> they um, usually just toss the card over in the corner because they really are excited about what's in the gift and the card means nothing to them. But maybe someday. Oh, I meant to do the little um, ball there in the poppy parade, but that's okay. See my sample? No big deal. I'm using um, the Parakeet Party and the Poppy Parade for the hat. And now all we have to do is um, die cut that out. And we will do that here. I think I used this one maybe? The second largest. I get confused. No, I did not use that one. Let's have used this one. The third largest, I think. Yep, I used the third largest, just the, the plain circle die. And then, you guys, I'm going to use my new blue um, mini machine for the first time. I thought, you know what? you got this, you need to get it out and use it. Look at these clean plates. I love it. Okay, we are going to cut out our little um, owl. I'm going to put him over there because I want room for my numbers. And I'm going to tape it so it doesn't slide. I'm using some old Halloween washi tape. 
<laughs> Stacy got the blue one too. Cool. You um right now when you join Stampin' Up, they gave us demonstrators a short window where we could order it um, ahead of time so we could show everybody. But um when you join Stampin' Up uh, through February, the promotion goes away, uh, one of the joining options is to get a blue or a white mini um, Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. So it's a really awesome uh, joining incentive. If you're interested, we would love to have you on our team. Just message me or... Um, well, I think it'll work, but that's, I used the wrong circle die, but it's still going to work. See how tight that one fits? I should have pulled them. I did use that second largest one. It's so confusing sometimes, but this will work. We'll just have a bigger, um, what do you call it? Back scallop frame. It looks cute. Maggie's letting us know she's here. Kat had the white one, but she talked herself into getting the blue one. I did too. I had the white one and they brought out that blue one and I had to have it. I waited and then I thought, you know, if you don't hurry up, the opportunity will be lost and you'll be sad. <laughs> so, yes, now I have a white one and a blue one. Too cute. All right, so I'm fold. I put some liquid glue on the top of these circle flaps, and I'm just gonna put my um, little owl right on top. Center that on the. I'm gonna go like this so I don't smear anything. And then when you open it, whoops! There we go. When you open it. It pops right out. I guess that's easy. It just looks it looks odd because I've got the um, owl on the left side. Okay, I went ahead and cut a number nine out. Riley will be nine, and I this is in the um, no, this is the brand new uh, alphabet that's in the 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 mini, the spring mini catalog. Um, you got all the alphabet and numbers and a few a few um, exclamation point and all that. So I always grab those. I love having um, alphabets. Um, I've got a lot. Okay, I'll show you a little trick that I use. Um, I'm going to grab a scrap of something, something. I have one of these little sponge daubers, and I will take my liquid glue. And if I had my silicone mat, it that would be better. But you can use just a scrap of... Um, paper or wax paper or whatever and I don't want this top part of the nine to have glue on it and then I just kind of daub it you don't want it to move because you don't want to get the glue on the front I just kind of stick my uh, sponge dauber in that oh and I put the glue on the wrong side of the nine <laughs> don't do that We'll just cut out a, another one real fast. You all wanted to see that pretty blue die cutting machine anyway, didn't you? Um, I was so neat and tidy, I put all my scraps away. So hold on, I need to grab some white too. So I'll be right back. You can see how messy my craft room is. <laughs>
Okay, here we go. I just need a scrap of that. Y'all, I think I can't talk and craft at the same time. I think that's part of my issue. Oh, another tip it, using your die cutting machines, use the same bottom plate because your dies will cut into it. Um, you're going to get some, I can't find the top plate now, here it is. <laughs> um, you'll get some of that cutting on the top, but um, it's best to choose one to use as your bottom all the time and then to flip it back and forth and then you'll get even wear out of it and that way when you're um, die cutting some, like maybe a solid circle if your top plate has a bunch of scratches on it and cuts from the dies it might emboss into your um, cardstock so I don't know who I learned that from but it's a great tip Now, if you have an intricate die, that doesn't um, really bother it as much. But if you had like a solid die, um, it it has happened. You'll get like little bumps on your your uh, from all the scratches. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna use my little picky tool. Oh, you used the gray one instead of the white one, Carol? I thought the gray one was for um, embossing. Let me look. There's two one gray ones. This one's for 3D embossing, and this one is for embossing, just a plain embossing folder. But you use them for, with your dies, and it works okay? Good to know. Alrighty, this is so little. I don't want to lose it, so I'm gonna stick it back in my thing. I need to get it in a magnet. All right, let's see if we can glue the right side now. So we want to put glue on this side. It goes through without staggering. That's good to know. It probably holds it tighter, right? Kind of works like a shim because it would be a little thicker. I sometimes have to use a shim when I'm doing some of those intricate dies, using some of those really lacy ones. Okay, I'm going to put my nine right here. I kind of like that little curly, curly into it. Oh my gosh, cat, go get her. It's freezing. I hope she's somewhere where it's warm. Cat's sister has locked herself out of the, um, her car. Other demos have been doing that. Okay, I'll have to give it a shot. All right, we're going to do a little heat embossing now. So I'm going to grab a scrap paper here. I'm going to stamp the It's Your Day from the, that is directly from the owl set. It's Your Day. Onto this half inch by two and a half I think you can just do, use a half inch strip and I'm going to take my anti-static tool and get rid of all the static get my embossing powder and my Versamark pad and hope since this is a red rubber cling stamp <laughs> that I can stamp this straight but if it's not I really don't care if it's wonky 
This is for a nine-year-old, and I don't think he would care if it's wonky either. <laughs> I just, if it was wonky, I meant to do that, right? Anti-static tool didn't work very well on that. Okay. I have a little paintbrush that I like to use. I can find it. I'll just use this little guy. Got this tiny, tiny, tiny little blending brush that I don't even know why you would want to use something that small. Maybe, maybe you would if you had a small area. Um, okay, and then we're also, uh, you need something right here so that it anchors the card when you um, want it to stand up. It'll keep the card. Here's the one that, um, doo -doo, where is it? We made Saturday. They used a little heart. We used a little heart and it just holds your card open. And I am just going to use a stamp because I wanted to use the punch. I was trying to make it a, like a boy, right? Something a boy would not be offended. <laughs> I was going to do a butterfly, I was going to do, but no, that wouldn't work, would it? All right, so where is my stamp? Oh, here it is. And I'm getting this stamp from another alphabet stamp. <laughs> I'm going to use these stars down here because I wanted to use this punch for my um, little stopper. But you could cut another circle or punch another circle or a heart or whatever you have. I just had this and I thought, let's give that a go. Sorry guys, I keep hitting the camera. And I'm going to emboss the, this as long as we're embossing and then we'll punch it out oh my goodness there I did it I hate to waste all that embossing powder that I usually dump this over a coffee filter and I would have avoided having a pile I'll get it later because <laughs> I don't want to waste it <laughs> And I apologize for the noise with the heat tool. And I think I will use my tweezers. We go. And then that alphabet set, what is it called? Alphabest has a coordinating, uh, I think it looks like a ticket. So I'm going to punch that out and then I'm going to flag the ends. Y'all, what time is it? <laughs> I am babysitting a couple kiddos here at three o'clock. Their um, baby sister has to go in for her six month checkup. And the doctor doesn't allow other kiddos to come in. I'm like, okay, so what if a mom doesn't have childcare? I think it's ridiculous. They all live in the same house, <laughs> so they're all getting exposed to every each other. I don't know. Sometimes these medical office rules are, in my opinion, silly. Okay. 
Now we need our piece of white paper and I am going to cut this because I forgot to do it. For the inside, I'm going to cut it at four by five and a fourth. It's just a fourth of an inch smaller than um, the card size. And I just grabbed a happy birthday um, sentiment. I think I grabbed I grabbed it from this. Simply fabulous. I thought the um, oh I let's celebrate, not happy birthday. So it says it's your day. Let's celebrate. It makes sense. And I used improper grammar, I noticed, on my cover thing on my YouTube. So I apologize. I did recognize that after I did it. So I will be fixing that, if you noticed. Make a adorable owl. We are going to make an adorable owl card. Okay. Maybe you didn't notice. and I, Now you will, because I mentioned it. Uh, I have a girlfriend who was a librarian, and she notices all grammar mistakes. My husband is very detail-oriented, too. He has to do a lot of uh, proposals and things, and he so he, review, he is kind of a grammar policeman, too. <laughs> Anybody else out there? <gasps> Okay, so on this one, I'm just going to attach that little tag right there. Oh my gosh, no I'm not. I'm just going to scrape that off. And I'm going to put it here. <laughs> so it looks like he's kind of holding that. There we go on that one. And then I made him a little bow tie out of the um, some baker's twine that I had. And I already did that bow so I wouldn't have to take forever in front of you guys. I think I mentioned last week that I was taught to always use some kind of embellishment on a card. I don't think it's really always necessary, but that was for swap situations. If you're making cards for, and you're going to swap some cards with other people. So I can hardly make a card without an embellishment. More is more, right? So this is my embellishment on this card. My little grandkids that live in Poplar Bluff, Missouri, which was is way south of here, they are home today because they're expecting snow. I think the teachers wanted a day off. <laughs> My little granddaughter, um, she doesn't have, she's not allowed to be on a phone or anything, but she has an iPad and she, there's a, I guess there's a, some kind of way they can do the, um, like it's like Facebook Messenger, but she she's only allowed so many friends on it and I'm one of her little friends, so she was able to message me this morning and let me know <laughs> that they weren't having school. And a parent has to approve. It's through the parent's account. It seems safe. I think she was bored. <laughs> well, let me, let me call Grandma. It's like FaceTime. Okay, if you'll notice on this card that I made...
it's not as uh, my doop doop, whatever that is, is not as deep as my friend Diana's card. See how hers folds out really farther. And then this part is more noticeable, your pop-up. So I'm going to put my ticket in a little um, further in, or I could do it this way. I was just afraid if I did it that way. Let's give it a go. Let's see what happens. You just have to remember to not put your... Um, I'm using Stampin' Dimensional, a, a little scrap of it, um, all the way because you want that this part to slip underneath. So um, when you're making your little tab, and like I said, you could use a circle or a flower or a anything, a punch. And I like that better. See how it pops out just a little bit more than this one? I'll probably change that up. I, I'll probably pull that off and change that up. I just like that better. Okay, and then let's trim his little bow tie. Or bolo tie, is that what they're called? <laughs> I don't know. He can't be too girly because these are for a nine and 10 year old boy. <laughs> okay, that's the card today. So, so simple. And that's how I copied this card. You just take a card that someone else has done and use some things that you have and make it your own. So, um, Thanks for joining me today. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. And um, I'll be back Wednesday for um, another live stream, Coffee and a Card. And I may be on Facebook and YouTube at the same time if I have enough bandwidth. <laughs> Whatever that is. We shall see. So that would be fun. I'll see you guys later. You have a great afternoon and happy stamping.